Hello and welcome to another Digital Photo Mentor Live on St. Patty's St. Patty's Day. So happy St. Patty's Day! Um, if you have any Irish blood, uh, like I do, um, I hope the luck of the Irish is with you today. <laughs> um, I had a little boo boo a moment ago, so we were twenty seconds late because I was in the wrong back end for the wrong live I was setting up for next week. So I had to quickly switch over. And today we are doing mountains. <laughs> and you see that I've got my green. I'm wearing green and I'm surrounded by green. So I chose mountains because I knew it was St. Patty's Day today when we were doing this one. And I thought we'd have some greenery from, you know, the forest and stuff around the mountains. So we've got lots of great images today. Um, not very many submitted, but I've got a few of mine that um, I'm going to show you how I made. So let's see who is here. <laughs> First Sunday in ages. Yay. Hey, Kelly. Nice to see you. Happy St. Patty's Day. Vivian from St. Louis. Charlene, I have one of your images. Thank you for submitting that. We did not get very many. Uh, Marty, I've got yours as well. Really cool a mountain image Marty sent in. So that's great. We're going to work on that one. I have some ideas already. Uh, Debbie Rob, of course, is here. Jim from Invermere. Hey, welcome. You should have some mountains in your scenery where you are. Karen, any mountains in in your area? I'm not familiar with Cayman and, and the view in Cayman. Deb from Alaska. David, Stephanie. Hey, good to see you. I've got some Oregon pictures, actually, Stephanie, um, from Northern Oregon. What is the name of the park up there? It's not, um, oh, for heaven's sake, is a national, big national park. It's not Yellowstone. Um, Glacier. Is it Glacier Park? Glacier National Park. I think that's the one, Rob. Holly found a pot of gold in her camera bag today. Yay. That's exciting. <laughs> maybe I should check mine. I hope I have a pot of gold. Well, maybe I need to buy a lottery ticket today. The luck of the Irish. Not too many mountains in Cayman. Okay. Good to know. Danelle, Alice. Welcome, Alice. Nice to see you. Catherine. Greetings from Ireland. Are you actually in Ireland? Yay. Yes, you are. Awesome. Well, it is your day today. No worries, Stephanie. Send some in for um, send some in for next week for cars. I don't have a mountain one from you, Danelle. I might have already done yours on another theme, maybe landscape. So maybe I used that one already because I looked through of the ones that I haven't done yet. No, I don't think it was Cascades. Cascades? Hmm. Glacier, Montana. Oh, yes, that was the one we went through. So yeah, we, sorry, we went through, um, we were in Oregon and we went back through Montana. So you're right. Yes, it is Montana. Thank you for that, Stephanie. But it is Glacier National Park. I, I remembered. No mountains in Ontario. Well, I've been to Ontario. Yeah, I guess well, <laughs> we, we joke about um, Mont Tremblant um, in Quebec. Um, because we went to a, a photography conference in Mont Tremblant and which means Mount Tremblay, right? And there's no mountain. We're, we're like driving and we're driving and we're like, okay, we're here, but where are the mountains? <laughs> and it was literally like what we would consider a foothills in Alberta. Mount Hood in Oregon. Yeah, that's a good one for sure. Bienvenido Earl. Welcome from Costa Rica. Nice to see you. Okay. All right. Cayman girls should go to hell. You have to, you had to get off the bus to hell. Okay. Well, I'm interested in that story. So there must be a place with that name. I'm guessing. So I'm going to go or uh, hop over. Um, I'm also going to mention that uh, right off the bat here, I'm going to talk about our topic for next week. So remember to send in your images. I'm just going to change my glasses because these ones glare too much on the screen. There we go. Um, remember to send in your images for cars for next week. And if you need the link for that, I have the link and Rob will put it in the chat. That is the link um, to the forum to submit your images for cars for next week. Um, and we're going to be setting up the next couple of weeks as well. Um, I think Rob has some ideas, but maybe if you want to 
put in the chat, um, Rob, take note of this. If you have any ideas for themes, like what kinds of images or what kinds of things would you like me to do or demonstrate in some upcoming lives? We have cars next week. Um, we could continue on the theme of different subject matter, or if there's a particular technique that you want me to demonstrate. Uh, we did, we've done color, we've done black and white, we've done layers, we've done cropping. Um, I think I've did, done HDR in the past, but we could do that again. I might demonstrate some HDR today as well. So submit your ideas for topics in the chat um, and Rob is going to make note, okay? So I'm going to head over to Lightroom because I've got all my images sorted in here. Um, okay, so yes, I've got Marty's image here. This is the one that Marty submitted, and it's really cool. Um, and his software of choice is Luminar. So I'm actually going to take this one over to Luminar's the raw file and work on it. This is another one that Marty submitted, but I much prefer this one. This one is really cool. And one thing that I'd like to mention about photographing mountains is when you're, what the ideal is when you're photographing mountains, you want to get the texture of them to come out like he's done here. And you need to have that light coming across the mountains, right? So in this one, the light is coming across and creating some great texture. And this next one, the light is more flat. Okay. So it's either um, late in the day or the sun is behind the mountain or something. So it's not picking up that texture, right? This one of Charlene's has got the sun coming through the tree and you've got some framing happening, which is really cool. And I was going to see if I can use Luminar to pick up those um, power lines and get rid of that as well. Uh, and then again, lighting on the mountain. So we'll talk about lighting. Look at this one again, some uh, cross editing. I think I've done this one before for some reason. Um, this is AJ's. Okay. So lighting is really important. I'm going to head over back to Luminar and I'm pretty sure I have this, this folder already in here. So yes, yes, there we go. Okay. So let's start with Marty's, this one here, and I'm going to just dive right into editing and I'm not going to do a preset. So let me change my screen. There we go. So this is a raw file. You can tell because it says develop raw. Let me turn on my mouse pointer. So raw file, uh, you'll see, and it says develop raw here. If it's a JPEG, it will only say develop. Okay. So you know if it's a raw file. If I do a different tool first, for example, if I start with enhance AI and just, you know, drag this up, I'm not going to do the sky enhancer. It actually does a really nice job of picking up some contrast because what can we tell about this image, right? How do we decide what we want to edit? This is something that comes up a lot as a question, right? So when we look at the original image and we look at the histogram, make sure your histogram is turned on. If you don't see it, just go to view and turn it on here, right? It tells me that it's very flat. There's It's squished together in the middle, meaning there's lots of gray tones, but there's no, there's no white, which is to the right, and there's no black, which is to the left. Okay, so Enhance, watch what Enhance does. See how it's stretching that out? So that's a good thing. It's doing a really nice job, okay? But once I apply that, notice Develop doesn't say raw anymore, right? But not to worry, you can still get to the develop raw tool if you go back to the edits panel, right? So it's like your history edits. I wish they would call this history instead of edits here, right? Develop raw is down the bottom. Now, the trick with this is when you click develop raw, if you've already applied something else and you come back to the bottom of the edits, so the, you, the first edits or no edits, it turns everything else off. So you can't see what Enhance is doing. But when we get here, it allows us to apply camera profiles, right? So the camera that applied in, in this case, I believe this was a Canon file. If I check Lightroom, it would tell me what kind of file this is. Yeah, so Canon CR2 file. So these are Canon profiles, right? And just by hovering over them, you can see what it's going to look like. So I like landscape because it enhances the blues of which there's a lot here, right? 
The next thing I want to do is go down to curves because the histogram is here as well. And I've talked a lot about curves recently and I've done a whole video. Sorry, I've got cat hair to clean my nose. Um, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the curve to punch the contrast up here. Uh, Rob, if you could please share a link to the curves video. And I hope you're taking notes on what topics people want. I see focus stacking as one idea. Um, okay, so. My mom is watching apparently. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm tucking in the histogram on the curve by grabbing the right edge. So this is the white edge. So I'm just bringing this pointer in this dot until it starts to touch where the data is. Okay. So this is the edge of the data, meaning I should be getting closer to pure white. If I want to check if I have pure white, just press J on the keyboard. Okay. So Rob's going to be sharing links again are you finding the curves video rob and um also something is up with our website okay um curves video and then also keyboard shortcuts so once my clipping warnings are turned on i can continue to bring this in and eventually i want to see some clipping okay so red indicates that the whites are now clipped or off the chart okay so they're off the graph and it's clipping the whites, meaning there's no detail there. So that's okay because it just tells me I've hit my the point where I want to be. So then I drag it back down until there's no clipping. So now I know that it's touching the edge of the graph without going over. Okay. Next, I'm going to do the blacks. So the left one and bring this one in. And I'm not going to go all the way. I'm not going to go till I get some clipping because it's kind of looking really strange and, and dark and blue, obviously. Right. So I'm just going to darken it a little bit. So I want to keep a little bit of the mystique. Right. The next thing I want to address is the color because the color is a little off. It's kind of wonky. So we're going to go down to this color panel. Right. We can try one of the presets. We could try daylight, for example. That seems a little better, <clears throat> but it's still seem it's still not quite right to my eye. Okay, so we could try one of these other ones. This warms it up a lot. So cloudy is meant to counteract a blue tint. So I'm just gonna try. There's no auto, but we can use this eyedropper. So I'm gonna try the eyedropper and put it on the snow. So the eyedropper is designed for wherever you put it or hover over, um, you want to find a neutral spot, okay? So whatever place you're hovering over or you click on, it's going to neutralize the color there. So you wanna make sure that you're on something that you actually want to be white. So when I click it, well, that didn't do very much. Let's try a different spot. That didn't do very much either. Let's try up in the cloud here. Why am I not getting any? There we go. Okay, so see how I clicked in the bluest shadow, right? And it altered the color and it pushed these sliders up, okay? So I think that's a little farther than I want to go, but I definitely want to make it more yellow because this blue tint that was there originally is a little bit too much. So there should be a little bit of almost warmth on this snow because it's in the sun and the shadow should be a little bit blue. So I'm trying to find that balance. If I neutralize this snow, the overall picture is too blue. If I neutralize the shadows, then everything is too yellow. Okay, so I'm trying to find some kind of a happy medium in between there, okay? Now we can do the photo editing dance. And yes, we're working on making t-shirts and things that have some of these slogans that I use all the time. <laughs> so you can have the photo editing dance. And now I can come in and see if I can add a little more black. And that looks a little better now. Okay, It was really, really blue. I like that color a lot better. Right. While I'm in here, the only place you can find to do chromatic aberration correction is here in develop raw and i don't see any i do see some noise though we can check that off just in case so if we want to deal with some noise reduction we can do a little bit of that here i don't want to go too far because when you do a lot of noise reduction because you see it fixes the noise 
but it makes the image blurry, right? You, you lose detail. So I'm going to do a little bit of noise reduction here and a little bit of sharpening. But remember we talked about sharpening and masking on previous lessons. So if you bring this sharpening slider up high, it's sharpening the entire image. This masking slider down here, the higher you bring it, the less sharpening there will be on smooth areas. So watch this sky and the cloud up here as I drag this up. See how it affects the sky less? Sky grainy, sky not so grainy, okay? So you wanna bring the masking slider up higher because you wanna sharpen just the edges and obviously this is way too much, okay? So let's see a before and after. So we're definitely sharpening. We're definitely getting rid of noise. The color's better, the exposure's better, right? So these are all positive things, okay? Don't need to do any transform. Now the other thing, once I close this and go up a level, remember I did enhance AI. If I close this, it's going to automatically open enhance AI, the next one, and apply it. Okay, now do I still want to apply that? It's not doing a bad thing, right? It's pretty good, actually. It's boosting the contrast and fixing the color a little bit. I tend to avoid the sky enhancer almost always because it does things like this. Um, you end up with a whole lot of grain and it's it's creating this weird pattern in the sky. So I tend to avoid this sky enhancer slider. And I don't know if I'm going to do a sky replacement here because these low lying clouds across the um, mountain look really great. So I don't want to, I don't want to, replace them or over override them right the clouds are free uh, above there's no clouds above the mountain peak so that's kind of cool right so before and after i briefly thought about doing this one in black and white as well so let's just see what it looks like if i go black and white okay so if we convert to black and white Again, be careful of these sliders because the sky seems to be really blotchy and there's some blotchiness in here, right? So again, be careful of sliders like this. And I could fix this. So if I wanna darken the sky, right? We need to add more contrast if we wanna keep it black and white because once you go black and white, it needs more contrast, okay? This, this makes it look flat again. Okay, so if I'm going to go black and white, because it's kind of a monochromatic image anyways, it's all blue tones. So I'm going to go with this and I'm going to go black and white and we can add a bit of contrast. See the yellow, right? So there is yellow in the cloud. So we can boost the yellow and bring the blue and the cyan down a little bit. And then we can fix this problem with the sky using the blur tool. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna go to blur, because it's kind of blotchy. I don't know if you can see that here, I'll zoom in. Can you see the sky is blotchy? So I'm just gonna use Gaussian blur and drag it up until I see the sky looks better, okay? Because the sky is literally just gray at this point. And then I'm gonna use mask AI to mask it into just the sky. And we'll see how well it does. My coffee's cold. <laughs> okay, so sky. Now it's recognized that there's sky and mountains in this photo. Uh, unfortunately, it's picking up all of this stuff as sky as well. So let's see what it thinks is mountains. Maybe we can do the opposite. Okay, so that's better. Um, I still am picking up all of this here. So it's not giving me a great mask. So what I might do instead is just paint it in, okay? So I'm just going to get a slightly less soft brush. So I want a smaller edged brush so that when I'm painting in, I can get close to the edge. And you'll see what happens when I use a hard edge brush here, right? But I'm just doing a really rough brush in first and then I'll get closer to the edge, okay? Let's zoom in to 50%, get a smaller brush. And I'm just kind of wanting to, I'm just adding that blur, remember? I'm painting in the blur to get rid of the blotchiness, okay? 
So I don't have to be perfect. I'm just getting rid of the blotchiness. So if a little bit of that sky is still showing, don't worry about it. It's just getting rid of the blotchiness. See that? There we go. Okay. Now I could copy this mask because I might use it again to do denoise. So I'm going to copy this mask. And I do see that there was a question from Holly. How is this noise tool different from noiseless AI? That's a good question. Noiseless AI does more analysis of the image. I tend to use the develop raw noise, um, denoise minimally, like subtly, and then I'll use the noiseless AI and mask it in where I want it. So that's the difference is you can't mask with the develop raw. So you want to keep it subtle and, and lower with noiseless AI, you can mask it and it, it's a little bit more intelligent. Okay. Um, if you tweak the luminosity noise, if you don't see any, no, if you don't see any noise, I wouldn't worry about it because remember noise reduction is blurring stuff. So that's how it, it removes the noise as it blurs things. So you don't need to blur or obscure the details in your picture. Milky way. That's a great, uh, great suggestion. Okay. Something with the denoise in Lightroom. Not sure if this has been done. Maybe a focus on that like you did on curves. Great question. Um, we can actually try that one. The challenge with denoise live in Lightroom is it takes like two minutes to process. Okay. So let's let's do that. I'll do that and let it process while I come back and work on something else in, in Luminar. Okay. So I've copied and pasted that mask or I've copied that mask. Okay. Um, it, you can see it still sort of looks blotchy to me, right? So I might even go back here and just increase it a little bit more. You can see how it's, it's kind of blurring the edge there. So I might go and do my mask a little bit better, make sure I get off the mountains, right? So I'm not doing the best job of my masking here. I want to make sure it's not on the mountain so there's no sort of glow. That looks better. There we go. Okay, right, so now I've fixed the mask. I'm going to copy it again. Okay, so let's take a look at noise then. So what Holly was talking about. So let's zoom in again. Okay, so now the sky's got no noise, but the whole rest of the image does. So let's try noiseless and it's recommending low. So let's do that. Okay. And while it's doing that, I'm going to hop over to Lightroom and I'm just going to do a really quick process on this one. For some reason, my mouse is doing very strange things. It's like doing, it's like a mind of its own right now. Okay. So again, we've got some odd color, but I'm going to make it black and white, just like I did the other one. We'll punch the contrast a little bit. Okay. So now how's the noise in here? Let's zoom into a hundred percent. Okay. So we definitely see the noise, right? So if we go down to the detail panel, this is where you'll find the noise reduction in Lightroom. And you'll only see this, this one here, this, this AI, uh, if it's a raw file. Okay. And what I might do is leave it as color. Okay leave it as color and denoise it based on the color image. And then I can convert to black and white after I've done the, the denoise. Okay. Cause it's going to give me a new DNG file. So if I think that I might want the color image at some point later, let's do it on this one. So I'm going to click denoise and it's going to make what's called an enhanced image. Okay. So it's showing me, um, the enhanced version. So literally you have one slider. Okay. So I can look at the before and after. Okay. I can zoom out a little bit if I want. Right. I can zoom into certain areas. Uh, let's, let's look at this area. There, there we go. Okay. So I want to look in the shadows. That's where your noise is going to show up the most. Okay. Can you see that? And there's color noise. So I can take it farther and it'll give me a preview, but you see how it's, it's blurring. 
the details are actually really good here. So let's let's take this to an extreme. Let's go like 85. And it says it's going to take 25 seconds to process. So that's not bad. But I'm going to do that and then hop back over to Luminar where we have now processed this one. Okay, so let's see what that's doing. Okay, it's doing a really nice job in here. Let's take it to middle and see what it does. Okay. See how details are starting to become obscure. And you increase the sharpness. Look at some of this. Oh, I've still got my clipping warnings on. You see it's sharpening the edges here. Remember that sharpening I did in develop? I think that's what's happening there, right? So I want to be careful of these edges here. Okay? So I'm going to go with Denoise Medium. Uh, there's my mouse going crazy again. I'm literally not touching it. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to develop, and I'm actually going to undo this sharpening down here because it's doing too much sharpening around the edges. Okay, so I'm just going to bring it down. Now let's see if that's better. Okay, so I picked up a problem. I knew where it was coming from, but if you don't know where it's coming from, you have to go back a few steps to see where, where you picked that up. So it's still a little bit there, but I think it's better, right? It's doing a good job. Let's look at the overall. Let's look down here. Okay, so Look at your image at 100%, but look at it zoomed out as well. Okay, that that noise list is doing a really nice job. Okay, so that looks good. And in this case, I applied the black and white first because it's not making us a new image. Okay, so now that we've got this black and white image, I'm actually going to do some toning on it. So the idea that I had was to bring back some blue. So I'm going to use the toning tool to put some blue in the shadows. So what I do is I bring the saturation up high to get the tint that I want. Let's go about there, maybe a little on the purple side, not too much. Okay. And then I'm going to go highlights. You have to bring the saturation up to get the color. Let's put the highlights at yellow. Again, I can increase the saturation. See, now it almost looks exactly like the color image we had a few minutes ago, right? Let's bring the yellow saturation down. And I can shift the balance if I want more yellow or more blue. Actually, I think I want more blue. So let's go a little bit this way. Okay, so now we're kind of back to a monochromatic or this is a duotone. Apparently my phone is dinging me in my pocket. <laughs> Let me turn off my phone. No, that's not my phone. Okay, so now we have what's called a duo tone. Okay, so one color in the shadows and one color in the highlights. If you want to do the same thing in Lightroom, you can using the color grading tool. We can look at that in a minute as well. Are there any questions as I'm going along here? Um, mm -hmm. Have you found a sweet spot for the denoise setting? I'm finding about 32-ish is not bad or individual images. Um, for the Lightroom one, no, I honestly haven't used it a lot and I'm kind of just testing with this one. So we ran it through at 85. Um, we'll take a look in a minute. So I'll come back to Lightroom and we'll take a look at that. Having spent time in the mountains, they're almost always a little hazy. This is natural. Yes, yeah, Smoky Mountains, because they're it, it's it's an environmental, it's a natural phenomenon, right? So to remove the haze, um, we could certainly do that. Okay. Uh, there's a dehaze slider in the landscape tool. Okay. So let's see what happens if we drag this up. See how it's really only affecting the the I guess the top mountain and the clouds and it's doing a nice thing on this mountain. Look at it. It's picking up all that detail, but it's not really affecting the foreground much because it's not hazy. So this tool is really smart in terms of um, it's really picking up where there's haze. I just noticed something neat. There's literally a shadow of this mountain here on the other mountain, which is kind of cool. So I like what it's doing on this midsection here. So I'm going to take it to extreme here 
And then I'm going to use that same mask that I copied before because I don't really want it on the sky. Oop, now you can see the flaws in my mask. <laughs> you can see that now. So my mask definitely needs to be fixed here and also inverted because it's on the sky. So my mask is on the sky, but I want it on the mountains. Okay, so now you can see my mask is not perfect, obviously. So I need to do a better job of that. Oops. Let's do a little painting and I'm just going to blend it in a little bit better. Well, that's not a very good job either. I need to get it off the sky is what I need to do. So I'm just trying to blend this edge out. Can you see that? So you could, can you see my, what I'm looking at? See how there's this edge here and we've still got lots of noise in the mountains. When we zoom into 100%, and I think my mask there wasn't so great either, right? So I'm trying to get it off the sky. So I can see problems when I zoom into 100% that I need to go back and fix because my blurring blurred the sky really nicely, right? But it's it's done. It's done, it's done this weird issue here. So I'm going to go back to my blur lay, blur, kind of like a layer, right? I'm going to go back to this blur here and dial it down because this is blurring the sky, remember? It's blurring the sky. So I'm just going to bring it to a small amount. Maybe even let's turn it off. Let's see what happens because once we apply noiseless, Let's see if it does a better job on here. So I'm looking to see if the sky is not so blotchy. Still blotchy sky. Still blotchy. And I'm not liking this dehaze as much as I did. Okay, so it's good to go back a few steps and take a look at what you've done, right? Again, now the sky is blotchy. I'm gonna remove this blur. And I'm going to redo it after, after I've done these steps, right? So the order that you do things in doesn't always matter, but sometimes it does, right? So right now my blur tool was not being effective. Let's try a sky replacement instead. I wasn't going to do a sky replacement, but it might fix the problem here, right? And I'm going to go into California clear skies because I know that is one that just has color. So I don't really want to add clouds to the sky, but I just want to get rid of that problem with this blotchiness. So we're placing it with a clear sky, hopefully. It's not popping in yet. There we go. Okay. So now <laughs> it's all over the mountains as well, but let's just work on that. We'll work on the masking. I'm going to give it some haze. Okay. It's actually not as bad. It's not as bad. It's over the mountains for sure. But let's see where it thinks the, yeah, see, it thinks the horizon is down here. So I'm going to, I'm going to fix the horizon placement and put it about there, right? Because we just need it to come to there, right? And then we're going to deal with some masking issues. So mask refinement. What I'm going to do is I'm going to darken the sky just so that you can see, or I can see where it's applying. So it's starting from here up, right? I don't want any relighting right now. And I want it off of the mountains, right? So see how I'm trying to fix this here. It's definitely going too far onto the mountains. I could try that same mask actually and see if we can mask it into just the sky. Let's see if I paste this mask. Oh, it won't let me. Interesting. It won't let me. I'm going to try something different here. I'm just going to try brushing in the sky. Like this. It's going over the mountains a little bit, but that's okay. 
Make sure I get the corners. I want to get the whole sky, but I don't want anything down here. Okay. I'm looking at which is better. Okay. The clouds is better that way. That's better. Okay. So the sky is better. Now I'm just going to brighten it back up again. Okay. <clears throat> so just by using this sky replacement, I can literally get rid of the blotchiness as well. Okay. Like so. Okay. That looks better. Yeah, we can still see there's an issue here. So there's still some issue because now the new sky has no noise. Ay, ay, ay. Let's try a mystical. So the challenge is matching your new sky, which has no noise. Can you see that? And the old sky. Okay. So we could try mystical, which is great on the mountains for sure. Okay. Does it solve this problem? No. We could actually add some film grain. Okay. That's a little bit much. And I could put it in the sky, but see how that's blending it a little bit better? That's blending it a little bit nicer, okay? And I could just mask that into that same area. So let's try that. Just a little bit of noise up here to match, okay? That looks super noisy. Let's see, I'm looking for the edge. Where's the original edge of the sky? Does it match? Let's try that. That's a little better. <clears throat> That's a little better. Okay, so remember, this is literally a black and white image with toning, but it looks color, right? I'm still not happy with the masking on here, but I'm going to live with that. So that's, I'm going to call that one my finished image. Let's go back to Lightroom and have a look and see what we've got. So this is the new DNG that came out with the noise reduction. That looks really good. I actually see some chromatic aberration though in here. There's a little bit of sort of color fringe. Let me see if I can get rid of that in here. So let's see about that. Can you see it? It's really subtle. You probably can't see it on your screen. But now I can do the same kind of thing if I want here, right? So I can darken it, turn it to black and white. And then if we want to do the same thing in Lightroom, that's the color grading tool, okay? So color grading gives you three options. We have shadows, so we can choose a blue like we did in Luminar, okay? It's not really blue, is it? It's not super blue. Probably need some in the mid-tones. That's full saturation on the blues. Okay, I'm just gonna make note of this color, 220. Let's do the same color in the mid-tones, roughly. There we go, see mid-tones? Okay, and then highlights. We want somewhere in this yellow. Okay. The neat thing about the Lightroom option is it allows you to lighten or darken at the same time. So I can choose midtones and darken these midtones. I could choose shadows and darken the shadows. And I might just put a quick little vignette on the edge here. You can see the vignette. 
I'm going to keep the feather soft. Be really careful about vignettes that you don't end up seeing that. Keep it really, really subtle. All right, there we go. Before and after. See, it looks like the same color image, doesn't it? Okay, questions. Okay, lots of comments here. I do not want to remove the haze. I love the haze. No, you're not crazy at all. <laughs> you're not strange or crazy. Yes, I agree with you. A luminosity mask <clears throat> would help a lot. Um, and the like, if I choose the sky here in Lightroom, there is a lens blur tool here. Um, I could do like, there is some blotchiness still in the sky here, right? But if I go in, for example, into, let's add a mask. So if I add a mask and I choose the sky, I think it will do a better job. Let's see. No, it's still being fooled as well. So Lightroom, so there you go. So Lightroom is being as fooled as Luminar is, right? Um, in terms of what is the sky, because the tones are similar. So if I wanted to select the sky, um, let's see if I can just draw a rectangle around it. Okay, so if I choose select object, I get closer, right? And let's try painting it in. Maybe if I paint in this area, that's better. It's still not doing a great job around the edges, right? So it's it's getting tricked as well. So it's it's a it's a complicated image to to mask automatically. So you'd have to spend some time. This is better, right? So I could literally bring the texture down and the clarity down yeah you can see where my i missed masking it in there you can see that okay, so if i go with brush instead and auto mask i'll try auto mask so auto mask that's another thing that people want inside of luminar um, is lightroom automatically sort of finds the edges of things for you and that doesn't exist in in luminar but look what the the mask is doing. So it's it's lowering the clarity. I'm I'm doing that to get that uh, blotchiness gone again. Okay, so I can't do a sky replacement in Lightroom, but I can do that. Uh, let's see. The strange edges are a giveaway that some processing has been done. Yes, exactly. Um, how many of you got my email newsletter this week? So the Photo Muse, which is now my newsletter name, um, came out and I, the thing that I talked about in there was the image of Kate Middleton, Princess Princess Kate, um, that edited, She they posted a family photo of her with her kids and it came out that it was edited. And my guess is she did a head swap because around the edge of her daughter's arm and her jacket, um, check my newsletter because there's quite a controversy over this image that's going on right now um, over, you know, the fact that she edited it and it's false. And, you know, people are now saying she's in a coma in the hospital. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. Yeah. Stuff has gone, gone wild. Okay? But it's definitely, like you said, a giveaway. Can I add grain to match the noise? Yes, I did. <laughs> right. Um, Foggy, misty images. I've given Marty some great ideas of tackling some problems you made editing this image. Awesome. Um, I, th I think it's worthy of, of going at this one again, Marty, and spending some time, um, you know, getting the, the sky right, because it is a little blotchy and there is a lot of noise. But I think that this image with the texture and the layers of the mountains is a really nice image and it's worth spending some time on. So great job. Yes, Rob was talking about the outfits in the <laughs> in the Kate Middleton um, photo scandal as well. Okay, let's go over here. All right, let's try something different. Uh, let's do 
let's do an HDR. And then I'm going to come back to this one of Charlene's as well. Actually, let's give Charlene's a go because I want to see if Luminar will pick up the um, power lines here, right? I'm going to do some raw developing first. So my nose is tickling <laughs> that cat hair. I was snuggling with my cat and I, she's left me some cat hair. So let's do develop raw first. I'm just hovering over to see if there's anything. Landscape gives some nice color. So let's do that. Okay, I'm going to bring the highlights down. I'm going to bring the shadows up a little bit. And let's show the clipping warnings. Okay, so clipping warnings show me that sky is completely overexposed. So if I darken the whole image and bring the highlights down, you can see that I can pull in a bunch more detail we can actually pick up some clouds in the sky and the rest of the image goes a little bit dark but let's let's just kind of go with this for now and brighten this this highlight a little bit and then i'm just going to give it a little bit more contrast okay so there's kind of this dance i'm doing right so exposure down exposure up right i want to keep some detail in the sky while maintaining some detail in the foreground, right? So let's go with that. Do we see any chromatic aberration? I'm looking at the edge of the leaf, maybe. So let's just tick it off. Yeah, I saw a little bit of an edge there. Let me just zoom in because you can see it on the edge of the leaf here. So it's usually on the edge of the image that you'll see it. Okay, watch when I turn it off. Can you see there's a green fringe on the edge here? So it's sort of cyan here and red here. Okay, so fixed chromatic aberration. And then I'm going to do auto defringe as well. See how that's fixing that color on the edge? And it looks like it's sharper as well. So both of those things are really important. Sometimes I find that one does a better job than another. Okay. The other thing I'm going to try with this one is to dump it into single image HDR. We'll try that after as well. But now I've done the develop. Okay, so it's gone a little darker than I would like. Let's bring that up. We can also try relight to bring some light into the foreground, right? Remember, check the clipping warnings, J. Okay, now I'm going to go to this erase tool and see if it's going to detect and remove the power lines correctly. And even if it does most of them or a portion of them, it's still doing a lot of the work for us, right? So there's a power line that's going up through here. And then of course these ones right through the middle, but then there's another one down here. Okay, so look at, it did a really nice job on this one up here. Did a nice job here. Okay, so see what it's doing, right? Removed some of the tree, <laughs> which is interesting. Okay, so I could actually, um, tell it to restore those areas, okay? So I can just paint in here because I don't need it to remove the trees, okay? Oops, I don't wanna get that. I got that one by mistake here. And see what's done? It's removed part of the tree here. So I'm just gonna get a smaller brush and say, I want to restore that part of that branch. I have to actually click it to make it work. There we go. Okay. And then just clean up some of the things. So I can come in here now and I'll just do these little bits that it missed. Okay. So it did a good chunk of the work for me. Okay, so that one wasn't so good. Let's undo that. It's going to go smaller strokes. Okay, so little strokes. There we go. When you try to do too much with this tool, that's where it makes a mess. Okay, so people say this tool doesn't work. It does work. You just have to do it in smaller pieces. Okay, so like you see me doing little bits of each part. Didn't do so good on that one. So I'll just do that one again and just run it again until you're happy with it. See that? So that looks pretty good. There's a little bit left here of a stick and then this edge is not quite right. So just look closely, clean up the bits that aren't working. There's a little bit more of the power line in here, but I can get away with it because it looks like a tree. 
And then of course I need to fix this one up here. So again, just get the edges, right? But it did, it did most of the power lifting on this wire for us, okay? So check through all of the areas. There's some wire up in here and there's a little spot here that didn't work out so great. So just do the areas again that aren't perfect. And I'm doing a couple of spots at a time. This one I can get away with because it looks like part of the tree, so that's okay. And same in here, right? And then down here we can continue with this one, and it didn't get the it didn't get the wires over here. So to get a straight line, hold your shift key down; it will draw a straight line for you. Oops, that's interesting. Let's just do a smaller amount. I'm going to get rid of this leaf over here too, because it's a problem. It bugs me. Let's try that whole one there. It's making leaves. <laughs> That's interesting. It's making leaves. Oh, and it's not doing what I want to at all. Okay, so I might end up leaving this one because it's not doing what I want here, but it's kind of not obvious. Um, where it is obvious is down here, right? Where it's picking up the light. Okay, so I might want to get rid of this one here, just where it's, it's highlighted, right? Like so. The bigger area you do, see the, the worst job it does. I find you really have to do a small area. Okay, so just keep it to small bits like that. Do a small bit. Okay, we could also use the clone tool to solve some of these things. Okay, so I kind of like to use the big tools first and then try the smaller tools. Yeah, see, it's not doing a great job here. I would probably just use the clone tool here. Okay, so I'm gonna close that, Okay, right? Definitely better, right? We got rid of most of these ones across the middle here. So let's try Relight. I'm not a super fan of this tool, but let's see if it will brighten this foreground area, right? Yes, and let's darken the background. Right, then we just need to say, okay, how far in to the scene do you want a light? Okay, you see that? So let's take the depth up so it's lighting the mountain as well. It's giving us a halo around the tree. So I'm going to keep it subtle. Like so. I'm going to get the de halo. Let's do that. And we'll warm it up to the near, like so. So that's not bad. It's doing an okay job, okay? That's better. Always look at the before and after. And if you want me to show you the clone tool to solve some of this problem here, okay? So again, I would zoom into 100%. I would clone at probably 50% or so. Um, keep the brush softness high and get a small brush because we got a small wire. So I'm going to select an area here just above the wire. And then I'm just going to follow along it. Okay. So I'm going to do one pass like this. And then I'm going to select an area below the wire and do a second pass. Okay. Maybe even a little bit off to the edge. So it's not perfect. So you want to make sure you're not cloning in a exact duplicate of what's above. That's the main issue, okay? So now I'm going into the tree, I'm gonna select a new area. So I keep selecting, see, look, now I've got a duplicate of that branch, okay? So I need to fix that. Like so, okay? And you want to look out for repeating patterns. So I might even clone from all the way down here, okay? Because repeating patterns are another giveaway 
of editing. Okay, so when it looks like the same branch appears twice, that's a giveaway. Okay, so you can see how it's kind of blending in a little bit nicer now. Same thing here. Okay, so I'm choosing to go up above. There's lots of little bugs in here too. These white spots are all little bugs, I think. Okay, so I'm cloning from above and then from below. Like so. And that makes it more believable. You see that? Because if I try and do this in one pass with the clone tool, that's when you end up making stuff that looks like duplicates. Okay, so I'm doing several passes. I'm reselecting the area that I'm cloning from. Okay, so I'm coming from above, I'm coming from below, and then my key, my finger is on that option key, alt option, because I'm constantly changing where I'm cloning from. Okay. Okay, so if I turn that on, off and on, you see the let's zoom in to 50%. This is what my clony is doing. See that? Looks believable. Okay. All right. What else will we do? Um, I'm going to go and try actually um, super contrast because super contrast will help with these highlights. We can actually darken the highlights. So if you bring up the highlight contrast, right, you can either darken or lighten. So I'm going to bring that up a little bit because that helps darken that sky a little bit. But we need some contrast in the midtones. Okay. Let's do that. And we need to still brighten those shadows. Look at that. So we can add contrast to the shadows and brighten it at the same time. Look what that does. Okay. So super contrast is doing a really nice job here. Before, after. And then I think as a final, oh, I missed, I missed another wire up here. I missed another wire. So back to my cloning tool, 50%, smaller brush, and just go from below, go from above. And get rid of that wire. Can we still see it? It's faint, but it's go it's going. And notice I'm avoiding the leaf right here because when I get up to the leaf, I'm gonna turn the softness down because when I get up to the leaf, I need it to have a hard edge, okay? Like that. I need it to be able to not have a faded edge, is what I'm saying. Okay, same over here, get in here. So I'm literally just kind of getting rid of these little telltale signs that there has been a wire. There we go. Oops. There we go. I do a little boo-boo in the middle here, but I think it's believable. Okay. And I think the last thing I would do is just add a mystical, like I do at the end. We can lift the shadows here using mystical as well. And we can also warm it up. Landscape actually might do well on this one too. Um, I'm gonna undo mystical for a moment and we'll come back to it. Uh, let's do landscape because of those greens, okay? So foliage enhancer. Remember we need to dial the color down to minus 30. So foliage enhancer. Does a nice job on the grass. 
and likewise golden hour. Let's see what dehaze does on this one. Darkens it. I don't want it darker. There we go. Now I'm going to do mystical. And there we go. This is a good one for fall as well. So this would be my before and after. And you could even go in here and do um, sun rays, or you could try the magic light and see if we can add a starburst. If it adds a starburst onto the sun, it's not. But let's just let's just add one here. So I want my brush, the size of the sun. Just click it there. So now look what we can do. Right? We can do this with the sun rays tool as well. Um, which might actually be interesting, but this one here um, is nice. It allows me to adjust the beams. We can have more beams or less beams. I kind of like 12 sometimes. Hey, right? we can rotate them. But that's a nicer starburst than what we had there. Okay. Maybe a little more glow on the sun. Okay, let's just do this one compared to sun rays then. I'm turning that one off. So I just dialed it down to zero to turn it off momentarily. And let's try sun rays instead. So I'm going to place the center where the actual sun is. Right. Well, I think I like this one better already. Look at how the light is coming across the mountain. Right. And as I move it, it adds this, this cool lighting effect here. So I, I think I'm liking this one better than the other one. Okay, so I want more glow. I don't want as many sun rays, I don't think. Definitely want it warm. And let's see, maybe not so much glow on the sun. but I like what it's doing here. I like what it's doing. Okay, the other one that I love a lot is the style on here, the overall look, because you can make it darker or brighter. Okay? Sort of this nice hazy. So there's that haze that you liked, <laughs> okay. Tile it down just a little bit. Yeah, I like what that's doing, especially down here on the land. It's really, really believable. Okay, can you see that? Let's rotate it a little bit. Let's randomize. That's kind of fun. I like that. It's almost like it's highlighting this tree here. So I like that a lot. There's our before and after. Cool image, Charlene. Thanks for sending that in. Okay, now I want to come to a few of my images. Um, I'm going to come back to Lightroom. Oh, I said I was going to try that one in um, HDR, didn't I? Let's, for fun, let's just throw this one into HDR Merge. And what happens is when you throw an image into HDR Merge, it pulls the raw file. So it won't have these this editing that we've done here. And we don't need, you know, any of this stuff. I'm going to do chromatic aberration reduction. And let's just merge it and then see what comes out of a single image HDR. Yes, cats need food. Poor kitties. Yes, they're poor, starving kitties. They're always starving. <laughs> cats are always starving. Okay, so basically we'd have to redo a lot of the edits. But I'm not crazy about what it's done in terms of taking the color out. Um, and of course, you don't have the raw file anymore. You're dealing with the DNG. But I feel like we've lost a lot of the color here. So when you have an image like this that's super high contrast, you could try the HDR and look at what, you know, the detail it's pulled out of here. It's actually done a really nice job. But we've kind of lost a lot of the color. So I like the edit we did. I'm just going to put that one into my Luminar trash because I don't need to keep it. 
All right, let's go to Lightroom. So I want to show you some actual HDR uh, before and afters and some images that I took in, in Glacier National Park in Montana. Thank you for that. Um, so these are also in Canada. So I've got a set of images that I took in, why is this one reflipped? Apparently I've got the wrong image here. Oh, I'm missing some images. That's what's happening. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, that's not going to match with that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm missing an image here. So I'm just going to go to the folder because I need to add these. I thought I added these already. So I need 20, 21, and 22. I need to add those. There we go. Okay, so I just made a quick collection. Let's put these up with the other ones. Okay, so these are the images I took. Oops, no, that was not in either. There's three bracketed images, but I think I've edited these ones. So I don't know why I've got this one in here. Let's just get rid of it. I'm going to make sure that these are not edited in any way. So I'm just going to reset all the develop settings. Okay. So these are the bracketed images that I took okay, of this particular scene. This is Canmore in Alberta. And it's, um, I think this is Three Sisters, isn't it, Rob? Okay. So those are the three images that I took, right? So I bracketed because I wanted to get full detail <coughs> in the sky and detail in these dark areas here. Because if you look at the histogram, <coughs> excuse me, I don't have a cough drop. If you look at the histogram, it's going off the chart on both ends, on the blacks and the whites. Okay. Oh, where's mine? Well, it's not actually clipping. So it could probably pull the detail out, but I did a bracketed set and I pulled those together as a bracketed image. And I did another set um, of this view as well. So when what you're looking for when you're doing the bracketing is that it's a scene, for example, like this, when I look at this scene, this one definitely is going off the chart. Okay. So look at the histogram and it's got blacks off the chart and whites off the chart and the whites are clipping. Okay. So the next one I did darker could have been darker still because you can see that it's still clipping and it could be better with a darker sky. And then a bright one to pick up the detail in the land, right? Let me just double check. I didn't do a darker one of this. So 37, 38, 39. So I'm looking at my file numbers here. This one says it's been edited in another. That's what this little notice means. It's been edited in some other application. 37, 38, 39. Do I have one that's darker? Oh, I do. I think these ones here. Okay, I think I need to add those. Okay, now, we're, oops, now we're talking. Okay, let's go back to my quick collection. And let's put these in the right order. Okay, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. I'm gonna reset. So this is another set. So usually what I do, is I will make sure that my images that are bracketed um, are labeled with a color so I can see them. I'm just going to reset all of these settings here. Okay, so they're all the same. And these ones here have been edited in another application, which is Luminar. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about that. So when I'm bracketing, Rob, are you back to your desk? If you could please share the information on how to bracket. So there we go. That's a better bracket. Okay. So when you're bracketing for HDR, you want to have two stops between your brackets. Okay. Always changing the shutter speed and ideally a low ISO. Okay. So you can see my darkest image. Okay. My clipping warnings are on. There's nothing clipping. I've got nice detail in the sky. One thirtieth of a second is my exposure. 
then my next exposure is one eighth. Okay. Now you can see everything is starting to brighten up. Is it clipping? I can't tell. Oh, I need to be in the develop module for clipping. There we go. All right. So now you can see that as we move to the next exposure that the highlights start clipping and we're starting to get more detail in the foreground. Okay. So I ended up taking five exposures. Oh, that one went to a 30th of a second again. Okay. So I've got two at a 30th of a second for some reason. All right. I'll just take that one out. My mouse and my computer are currently going crazy. Um, I am not touching anything right now. <laughs> All right. Let me try that again. All right. 30th of a second, eighth of a second, half a second. And this one is a 30th again. So I don't need that one. And then two seconds. Okay. So half a second to two seconds. These are the four images in this case that I used. Okay. So the darkest one has no highlights clipping and the brightest one has no shadows clipping. That's what you're looking for. Okay. Um, nope. That's the wrong article, Rob. I'm looking for when, when to do HDR, that article. HDR or not. Okay, so those are the four that I'm using. And when you're pulling <clears throat> your HDR in Lightroom, um, we can try this both ways, actually. We can try this with Luminar and with Lightroom. And I've done this image several times. Okay. We can do it in Lightroom by just selecting here and going right click. But I want to do some basic processing on them first and have them all matching. So I'm going to pick the one that has sort of medium detail, this, this exposure, right? Maybe I'll pick this exposure because I want to get the camera profile. Okay. So I want to get the camera profile. I'm going to use Astia <coughs> and I've got auto sync turned on. So you see what happened when I did that? It said, set four images, right? I'm not touching any of this stuff, right? I don't want to ch change my exposure, but I just want to make sure that the chromatic aberration is on, the profile is on, that's it, okay? And the camera profile. I could adjust the color if I want it to be a bit warmer, okay? So we can just go a little warmer and you'll see how it said adjusted for four images. Now, when I come back to the library, I can open these four or merge them as HDR, right? Oh my goodness, my mouse. Okay, so right click and photo merge HDR. The dialog box comes up. I did take these on a tripod, so I shouldn't need to auto align, but it doesn't hurt to have that checked off. Sometimes I'll leave auto settings on. That's going to be auto exposure settings, okay? And this one here is doing deghosting. So I'll show you that in a minute, okay? All right, so this is what it looks like with auto settings. That's why I don't usually leave auto settings on. And deghosting overlay, what deghosting is doing is that anything that's moved in your image, like if you've got um, a tree that's moving, maybe you have a long exposure, maybe somebody walked through your scene, like you can see there's a person here, okay? So if I use deghosting, it should, minimize um, any double image kind of stuff that's happening. Let's see what happens if I choose high, see if it picks up that person. Okay. The challenge with Lightroom though, is it doesn't allow you which image to choose from. Okay. So now it's kind of done deghosting on this area. I can zoom in if I want to see if it's getting anything wrong or I can use low or none. Okay. It's not getting the person, so I might end up just removing them anyways when I get to, you know, cloning them out. I'll probably clone them out. But I'm not happy with these auto settings, so I'm going to turn auto settings off because it's kind of not what I want it to do. It's doing way too much over the top with pulling up the shadows. Or you can leave auto settings on and adjust it afterwards, okay? Because all it's doing is adjusting some Lightroom sliders. So let's leave it on, and I'm just going to click Merge. I'll show you the difference pulling these same four images into Lightroom, into Luminar HDR. It gives you different options. 
yeah, you can sync in Lightroom. You can you can click the sync button, uh, but I had auto sync turned on. Okay, so I'll show you. I'll show it with another set of images, Stephanie. So on this set here, for example, okay, I have another set of images here of Canmore as well. This is in the winter, um, and I was doing a nighttime shot, and I also. It was very crooked for some reason. I don't know why, but I want to. Let's say I want to start with this one and correct that tilt. Okay, I've also got lots of dust spots. Okay, so auto sync is down here, right? If I turn it off, there's a toggle there. Okay, so let me just leave it off, and I'll show you what happens. Okay, so first thing I want to do is crop it because it's crooked. So I'll try auto. That didn't do the trick. And I'm just going to use the ruler and go across the horizon because I know there's the, the snow horizon and I'm just going to draw it right across there. Right. That looks straighter. Right. Let's keep that tree in. I want to keep that mountain in. And let's just keep the full width. Okay. So it's kind of going a little more pano. Right. And I'm going to have to deal with those dust spots of course in luminar you could do that automatically okay but if i do that here with lightroom okay i'll just get rid of the dust spots these are star trails because my exposure was um 152 seconds on this one so it was two and a half minutes so you can see that my these are actually star trails starting to happen okay so i'm getting rid of the dust spots there's that one major spot uh let's turn on the visualize spots See, it's picking up the stars. I don't want to delete the stars. That's fine. Let's just go with that one. Okay, so I've got rid of that one dust spot, and I've corrected the tilt. Still feels a little crooked to me. Let's just go a little bit more. How's that? Okay, now notice it has not done the other ones because I didn't have auto sync on, okay? So now if I choose sync, it lets me choose which things to sync. When you're doing auto sync, it syncs everything. Okay, so now I'm going to synchronize. Okay, I could also pick a different camera profile, right? For example, this is a Canon file, right? I shot these with Canon. And I could also make sure that I have chromatic aberration on. And it's not picking up the lens, but I know which lens it is. It's a Tamron lens. It's a 17 to to 35 yep so it's correcting some of that edge distortion okay so now see how it's fixing that edges also the vignette on the edges if i sync again it's going to apply all of those things i'm going to check all synchronize okay and then i have all four matched so the spots removed they're all corrected and cropped okay okay so let's come back to this first set and where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, I bet you didn't get added into the collection. Okay, so we're on JPEG, we're on JPEG. Oh, here it is. Okay, so there's our new HDR DNG file. So if you can't find your new file, I was in a collection and I thought, okay, maybe it's only gone back to the original folder, which it would have. So I could go look at there. The other thing to do is if you can't find it, um, sort your images by cut by file name, okay? And it should be right after the ones that you just edited. And for some reason, it's not showing my. There we go. I need to see my file names here. Okay, so I didn't we'll mark them all as yellow. Where are we? There we go. 135, 136, 137. So these are all marked as yellow. These are the ones I merged. And then what I do, and this is just my own system, I mark the one that's the merge file as red. Okay. So you can see the ones that I merged together. Those are the yellow ones, and then there's the merged file, okay? Let me just move this one down here. Same thing here. Mark these as yellow. Merged one is red, okay? So now when I take this one into develop, this is the merged one, okay? 
I can see what edits auto has done. Right? So it's done this. I'm not super happy with it because it's taking the shadows too far. And I'm going to do some masking on the sky. And it feels a little blue. So I'm going to warm it up a little. And then we're going to do some masking. Okay, so you have a lot more latitude when you're working with um, a DNG of this merged file because it's 16 bit. Okay, so see how it's doing. It hasn't picked the whole sky. See, so even Lightroom is not perfect in its masking. So I want to bring the exposure down. That looks pretty good. Okay. I just moved that guy out of the way. Let's name this sky. And then I want to um, pick up a little bit of this area as well, because if I'm darkening the sky, what also has to be darkened, okay? I'm gonna add some blacks, because that will rich. See how the black brings the color out in the sky? And I'm gonna add object, and I'm gonna use the brush and just paint over like this bright area, particularly. I'm not so concerned about this area because if I'm darkening the sky, this would be darkened as well, right? And it didn't get a perfect mask on there and it's got the, you know, grass as well. So I'm not crazy about that. Let's try brush. Zoom in a little bit. Okay, so I'm adding with a brush auto mask so when i paint it should find the edges for me okay i'm darkening the mountain as well so you have to be careful with that because i don't want to darken the mountain it's just the sky right so oops lost my brush so i just want the sky to be darkened so you have to be really careful Right, and if I want this sky over here, I could have to paint that in as well. Maybe lower the opacity and darken this area a little bit too. Okay. It does a pretty good job when you're using brush um, find edges, but it's not perfect. You can see in here because it's darkened the mountains as well, and I don't really want to do that. But let's make it blend. Okay, now if I want to brighten the trees. I could do another mask or I could go into the color mixer and choose greens, right? So I want a luminance. I want to brighten all the greens, but it's not getting all of them. See that? It's not getting the really dark blacks. So if I want to brighten everything, I have to do another mask. And this time I'm going to choose color range and just draw it over the grass. Okay. So see how it's done a really nice job of selecting all of the forest. I can refine it so it's not into the sky, right? And then I can just brighten the whole thing. Remember, if you lift the shadows, you need to bring some black back. Okay, so I usually lift the shadows and the whites, okay. like so. I still feel like it's too blue there that's warmer see that warmer less pink less magenta there we go okay and then i could also do the mountains with by selecting color range or object okay i'll put a little edge vignette on this one and that looks pretty good so there's the merged HDR image. You can still see it's got really black blacks and white whites, and that's how much detail you can pull out, okay? Let's take these same four images though that I pulled into Lightroom and let's do HDR and Luminar, okay? As soon as my mouse is done going crazy. Now, normally you would right click an image and choose edit in Luminar, okay? If you want to use the Extensions though, especially the ones in the front end of Luminar in the, in the catalog section, you need to go to export, right? 
find the Luminar Neo section here, okay, Luminar Neo. I've got lots of things that I can export to. These are all export presets and HDR merge, okay? So what will happen is it's gonna grab those four files and take them over to Luminar and bring up this dialog box, okay? Now, just like Lightroom, and it, see how it knows these are bracketed, okay? Now I can choose chromatic aberration, ghost reduction, and unlike Lightroom, I can choose which image to pick from, okay? So I'm gonna pick, um, I'll pick the zero one. So if you pick a darker image, you'll usually get less ghosting because things are not moving as much because your exposure is quicker. Okay, so I can choose the amount and which image. I could not choose the image in Lightroom. So then when we merge them, it'll come into Luminar for us to continue editing, okay? Oh yeah, we're going for the blues on Friday. I saw that, Rob. Okay, uh, let's see. All right. Even with the improved sensors and software, you recommend two stops differential rather than one stop when bracketing? Uh, yes, even more so with the new sensors because the improved sensors have a greater latitude of exposure, meaning a raw file. When you have a raw file, it carries data two stops in either direction of your actual exposure. So by exposing one stop apart, you're actually doing a lot of overlap. In an image like this where the sky is smooth, you might get a better gradation, right? But I'm actually gonna potentially change this sky anyways or add some clouds, right? So yes, I do recommend two stops. Read that article, Danelle, um, that Rob put a link to and I explained that in, in there. I also have a course. Um, we have a course on HDR. So if anybody would like to do that one, it is a little bit older. It talks about Aurora HDR from, from um, Skylum, but now I, would, I'm, I may redo that one and talk about using Luminar Neo. Didn't know you could sync multiple photos. Usually sync after the fact of the primary photo. Auto sync was the thing I had on. Just keep in mind that if you have auto sync on, like you said, it doesn't let you choose which things to sync. It's syncing everything. That's all, right? <laughs> well, actually, Rob wasn't with me when I took this photo. I was on a I was on a retreat by myself. I took a weekend by myself. Oh, there he says. Yeah. <laughs> See, I was on a winter retreat. I was trying to do some writing. I was trying to do some writing. Oh, there was definitely some wine later. Yes, there was definitely some wine. Yes, Lightroom's masking has really come far. Okay. Um, and I want to come back to this, this image in Luminar because look at what's happened. Okay. So do you remember the image that we got out of Lightroom when it first came up? It was not nearly this good. Okay. I'm way happier with what's happening here in terms of the auto settings in Luminar, right? It takes me to presets, but I'm just going to go straight to um, edit, Okay, right? I'm going to go right to enhance because look what enhance AI does, especially to the forest. Do not like what it's doing to the sky, okay? So again, I don't use the sky enhancer because this is another telltale sign. Look at the halo over here and it's dark in the middle. Okay, so I don't use the sky enhancer. I really like what this is doing on the landscape. So I'm just gonna take it off the sky. I'll use mask AI, or I could just use the, the brush and mask it. Honestly, a lot of times I just mask using the brush because for me, it's quicker. Okay. The color of the grass. You question the color of the grass, that it's blue grass. <laughs> So I'm going to try sky because I want to mask it off the sky. Um, and that's pretty close to what I want. And then I just need to invert it, right? So I've chosen sky and then I'm inverting it, right? So now these adjustments are just on the foreground, right? I'm going to dial it back a little bit. Right. I'm going to use the landscape tool because I know that that's going to do a good job giving me some golden hour. Look at that. Look what that does, right? And let's do the foliage and of course, dial it down. I find usually minus 30 to 35 and then keep this guy low, okay? But that's doing a nice job there. 
Okay. Another one that I think I might try in here is actually dramatic. Okay. It gives me some nice contrast. Um, see what it's doing in here, but I want to keep the saturation. I don't want to desaturate. And let's just play around with this a little bit. Okay. I might mask the same area. I should have copied it. No, that's actually not too bad. So I kind of like what that's doing. Okay. And my favorite or one of my favorites is color harmony. I should actually put it in my favorites. Okay. So when you favorite something, if your tool that you're looking for is missing, it's up here. Okay. And sometimes this happens accidentally if you right click. So if you're missing a tool, it might be under your favorites. But this color contrast under color harmony is like one of my favorite things. Because look what we can do. We can add contrast to the greens and brighten the greens while simultaneously darkening magenta. Okay. So I'm going to keep it a little bit lower. But as I move this, like watch what happens, right? I can darken purples. That's brightening the purple, darkening the purple. So the, the mountains are getting darkened, the sky is getting darkened, and the greens are perking up, right? We can also work on warming up the worms a little bit, shifting the blue. So do we want the mountains more blue or purple? Let's go maybe a little bit towards the blue. Right? Sky's a little on the purple side, so let's shift it a little bit. Still a little purple. We can warm up the whole image or cool it down. Right? And then color balance allows you to shift the color based on shadows, midtones, and highlights. So this is really cool. Okay, so midtones, if I want more green, I can get more green, okay? Or just warm it up a little bit. See that? So play with these sliders, take them to extremes like I'm doing, just to see what they do. Okay, well, let's go highlights. So the highlights are gonna be up here. So if I want more yellow in the sky, it does tend to brighten at the same time. So you kind of have to be careful of that. I don't want more purple in the sky. So let's go a little bit this way. That's too purple as well. Right. Okay. And shadows. If I want to warm up the shadows, again, that's the, the grass, the trees. So let's see what this tool, after all of this, is doing. Let's see how see how that works. I really, really like this tool. I really, really like this tool. Hey, I'm finding that the whole image is actually a little too bright now. So I'm going to come to develop and we're going to darken a little bit. And then we can also use develop to adjust the color overall. I remember our temperature is here, add some curves and so on. Okay. I just want to darken it for the moment, but you can also use the develop tool to dodge and burn. And I've done this on this image before and done a really nice job with it. So I'm going to add a little vignette here. Let's just make it a little smaller. And I'm going to move the vignette slightly off center because I don't want to darken this tree anymore. I want to darken this side of the image a little bit more. Okay, so change my feather. Like so. Okay, so I'm just darkening a little bit. Feels a little bluer than I've edited this one before. Feels a little blue. Okay, so I could shift my color if I go to develop. Go back and let's just shift it a little bit warmer. Still feels off color from what I've done before. I've done it way more purple before, but this is a different edit, okay? Um, I'm going to show you one more quick tip here that you can do with the develop tool. We do have a dodge and burn tool and I'll show you both ways. Okay. If you're using dodge and burn, that's for lightening and darkening selective areas of your image. Okay. But it doesn't 
allow you to change the color or do anything else. Okay. So for example, I always use this one less than 15 on the strength slider. Okay. And I'm going to start with lighten. So if you want to bring out some highlights, okay. So for example, if I want to just highlight some areas, like I want full softness here and it's even too bright. Okay. So I'm just highlighting these grasses. Okay. Let's highlight the edge of the trees, get a smaller brush. So I'm just highlighting some stuff that I want to showcase. Okay. You can also bring out part of this mountain. I could bring out part of this bridge if I want, lighten the bridge a little bit. And the grass is over here. Okay, so you can see what it's doing. Right? You're giving some more texture. You can also darken at the same time. Okay, so same thing. Now I'm just going to get a bigger brush. So you can use the darken to make sort of a custom vignette, right? I can darken the edges like this, right, to bring the eye in. And I'm doing all this with the one tool. You can do the same thing with your develop tool and get more specific. You just have to apply it more than once. Okay? This, I find the dodge and burn tool, um, I mean, it's limited. You can only do brighter and darker. That's it. And sometimes it gives you a color shift that you don't want. For example, if I want to darken this part of the sky, okay, it's actually doing a pretty good job here. Okay? Maybe I want to darken this as well. And the mountains, that's actually pretty good. Sometimes it gives you a color shift you don't want. Whereas if you use the develop tool, you can do the same thing, but you have more options. For example, I can actually paint with contrast, right? So I could paint with contrast. I could paint with sharpness, right? I could paint with curves, color, anything. So for example, if I want to warm up the grass and give it more contrast, I can literally take my brush and just paint this effect in where I want it. Okay. See how I'm just highlighting these particular trees now. I'm doing a really quick and dirty job to show you this. Okay. Now, if I want to darken in another area, I could just apply the tool a second time. This is way too much contrast. Okay, so if I want to do something different and darken, I just apply develop again and mask it in a different way. Okay. And then my favorite tool, or another of my favorite tools, I'll also add to my favorites, Mystical. I've switched back and forth between Mystical and Glow, depending on whether it's a portrait or um, a landscape like this. I find Mystical does a better job on landscapes and I find that Orton Glow does a better job on people. Okay? I didn't do a great job of masking on this grass here. I'm gonna just dial this down here. And, you know, where did I do that? No, oh, that was the dodge and burn. Okay, so I did too much. I can actually literally just dial this down. That's better. There we go. And I don't like how it's bright at the edge here, so I'm gonna erase it from down here. I don't want the edge so bright. Okay, so there's our before and after from Luminar. Let's compare that to the Lightroom edit. Where's our final edit here? Now, let me see if I can somehow get these sort of switching. Okay, so there's Lightroom. Okay, there's Luminar. I kind of like the Luminar one better. It just has more mystique to it. I like the look of it. See you, Stephanie. Uh, let's see, okay. Yes, you can also do sync in Luminar Neo, not auto sync though. Can I use it multiple times to change several different colors? Um, which tool, Danelle? Which tool in which software? <laughs> Sorry, I missed your question. 
Can you use the radio filter to bring out the light to the sun and reduce the light everywhere else? The radio filter. So in Lightroom, again, so clarify your questions for me, Danelle. Um, the color tool, Luminar. Oh, just now. Can I apply the color tool more than once? Yes, absolutely. Yes. So if I want to use the color tool, right, to shift any of the colors or using that one I did with the color harmony, yes, I can apply any of the Luminar Neo tools more than once and mask it to a different area. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not happy with the the color that I did here because I think I, I made it less purple. So I'm going to do some, some adjusting here because I liked, I liked the color that I had originally. So I'm just going to undo some of these edits that I did here as an example. Because I like the purple better. Yeah, let's go with that. I like the purple better. Okay. Still a little gray for me. Okay. I might adjust the sky. But yeah, so here's another example. So if the sky is too purple, I can take the color tool. And let's say I want to shift. I want to shift the purple. I can make the mountains more purple. I can make the blues more purple. It's not actually shifting the sky color. Sky's gone gray on me at this point. So I need to go back somewhere and figure out why my sky is gray. I don't know if I did it in here. Kind of was gray. Maybe I need to make it more blue in here. Yeah, I made it too yellow here. Too warm here. Let's just make it. Oh, I'm masking that. I forgot. I think that's masked. Uh, let's see. Oh, maybe it was this develop. Yeah, this one I just did the exposure on. Ah, I did. I made it warmer here. There it is. That's where it is. There we go. Now we got more purple. So see how you have to go back a few steps to find your, your mistakes or when you want to change something? Okay, so this one here, if I want to adjust purple, I'm going to undo this one. If I want to adjust purple or greens in one color instance, I can do that. So let's say I want to shift the greens more to yellow. Okay. I can do that. And I could mask it in, but it's doing a nice job. Um, I can shift the purple as well. And if I want to mask it into a certain area, I can do that and then apply color again, right? I want to give the orange a little more saturation. See, that brings that bridge out. I like to brighten yellow and darken green. Can you see how that adds contrast? Or the other way around. Like so. Um, I could try the same thing with purple, right? So there's purple in the clouds. So darkening purple, brightening magenta, and just play around with your colors. I like I like the image though. Uh, let's see. We're coming up on, uh, on two hours and we're kind of losing everybody. So I think we're going to call it, um, I think we're going to call it a day. Alice, most of your editing is Lightroom and Luminar. Would there be any benefits in using Photoshop on these images? Honestly, Alice, no. Um, there's nothing that I wouldn't do. I would have had to take the Photoshop to do that I couldn't do in either of the other two. Um, like this one here, uh, if I wanted to get rid of this, this bush down in the bottom, I might take it to Lightroom. Uh, but I could easily, or I might take it to Photoshop. But there's nothing here that I want to remove that requires the extra... Photoshop. Yeah. No, there's nothing here that I wouldn't, I would take to Photoshop and HDR in Photoshop. I actually find not as good. Yeah. Yeah. This is definitely, I mean, it's sunset and I like the whole idea of the purple mountains, right? So that's why I left the purple. I like the purple. Thanks, Catherine. A fantastic night of editing, a lot to learn. Beautiful photos to being edited. 
Uh, hopefully Luminar will come with a few more tools, then we'll be sorted. Remember there's also Luminar for iPad now as well, okay? So um, keep in mind that you can practice and do a, a rough edit on your iPad now. Um, I literally <laughs> I literally had to buy a new iPad to be able to demonstrate it. So if you want to share that video, Rob, um, a link to our iPad for Luminar for iPad. Ooh, junkyard shop. Yes, that would be great. I would love some car photos. Yes. So let me, that's a great segue. Um, that's a great segue. Let me go back into my quick, my quick thing here. Oh yeah. I was going to just show you some other mountain photos. Um, let's just talk a little bit about mountain photos, but submit your images for cars for next week um, using this link here. And um, I'll show you a couple of other things here about mountains. So I wanted to talk about photography. And one of the things I want to talk about, I'll save this other one that I did with Canmore because I actually changed the sky. So the one that I showed you where I merged these or auto um, synced the settings, I actually replaced the sky on it and put some Aurora. And it's quite common that Aurora does appear there. Did I photograph that together? No, but this Aurora is from our um, Sky Pack number two, which does have some Auroras in it that I did photograph in Alberta. And Aurora does appear here. So for me, it's my image. Both of them are my images. But if you want Aurora images um, to put into your skies and you don't have Aurora in your area, check out our Sky Pack. Rob, can you please put a link to the Sky Pack? eclipse coming up yeah that's a good question um we're not actually going to get it here in our area so let me come back to that one roger is it a solar or a lunar i think it's a solar isn't it coming up but i want to talk about just mountain photos in general um so this one here i literally took out of the car this is glacier national park in in montana that we talked about earlier and some beautiful mountain scenes and sometimes there's not a place to stop there's no roadside pullout so you could see that like this is the car mirror here so i literally was taking this out the window so i rolled down the window and you could see my exposure here so the the key with photographing out the window is that you have a fast enough shutter speed because look at this wall here it looks like it's moving right because it is we're going fast it past, uh, past it quickly so in essence it's moving right it's moving according to the camera. So I'm using a minimum 500 of a second shutter speed. A thousand would be better. And also try not to get things in your foreground as much, right? So I'm trying to get not so much of the wall and obviously the mirror, but those were all taken out the window of the car. You know, if I want to go and edit this, I could literally just crop out the wall and have, you know, a decent um, mountain scene photo crop out some of the wall, make it a little more panoramic. And then I get the essence of this mountain scene. Needs more editing than this, but you get the idea, okay? This one here, we did stop. And I saw this couple sitting here taking a photo or looking with their binoculars. So I actually incorporated them into my picture because when you have human elements in your scene, it actually gives perspective. So you can get an idea of the scale of the scene, you know, where you're at. And you can see the cars over here on the road as well, right? We've come along this twisty road around the side to this viewpoint. And then I, I was coming back to the car and I saw them reflected in the car and I literally took a picture of them in the, in the car window. So it's kind of interesting, you know, it's facing the other way and I'm just experimenting with, with ways of doing things differently. But when I talk about mountains, remember, you don't have to have the top of the mountain in the scene. So this would have been an acceptable submission for a mountain picture because you can tell where it's, you know, where it is roughly, right? And you know that this is in some mountains, okay? Solar eclipse, total solar eclipse in Texas. Okay, interesting. Um, if you're photographing a solar eclipse, you need to have welders, um, uh, the special filter for that and welders goggles for your eyes never look directly into a solar eclipse you can literally make yourself blind and if you're looking through the viewfinder as well that's the same so don't think that if you are looking through the viewfinder 
at a solar eclipse, you're protected because you're not looking at it. No, it's actually worse because it's magnifying it into your eye. So make sure that you have um, Walder's glass uh, as a filter in front of your lens or a special solar filter. It blocks a lot of the light and a lot of the UV that's really harsh and damaging. And never look at the sun directly unless you're using that special welder's glass. Okay, so I am not an expert in that at all. I just know that you need the particular special glass. So do some research into that and do your due diligence before you attempt to view the solar eclipse and or photograph it, okay? So be very careful. So there's my public service announcement for the day. <laughs> so this one I actually edited um, and it's a long exposure with a tripod because I wanted to get the water moving. So it's a one second exposure, right? Hopefully it's showing my exposure. Come on. There it is. So you can see one second exposure at F22, um, ISO 200. Okay, so it was in the sun. I may have used a neutral density filter here as well. Okay, so this is a whole other topic and I might save this one for waterfalls and so on, but I just thought the scene was really beautiful. And that's, I didn't do a lot to this one, actually. I could probably do a better job, do a better job editing this. This is a Fuji image. Let's choose a Fuji profile. I'm going to reset this one. Okay? So you can see that I kind of tried to fix the tilt. You can see the top of the mountain there, but it is tilting. Generally, water runs straight down. <laughs> it doesn't run diagonally. So um, the rocks may be diagonal, but you can sort of tell the water should be straight up and down. Right? So I like my waterfall off to the side like that. And I'm going to do the shift double click trick real fast on this one. Okay, so it lowered my whites. I'm going to bring them back up again. I got little bits of highlights um, clipping there, but we're going to fix that. And I'm also going to mask it because I want darker on this side and darker on that side and lighter in the middle. Okay, so what's the easiest way to do that? All right, I want to get these things even. So I'm going to use a radial mask and just make a big old oval. Put it on the part in the middle that I want to stay dark like this. Now, see how I want to make it bigger and it's kind of off the screen? I can zoom out and literally just make my thing bigger. I wish I could do this in Luminar. Unfortunately, it will not let me do that. So I'm going to go a little bigger, just like that. Okay, so now I've got the waterfall selected. All I need to do is invert it so I have the outside. There's a little button here to invert. And now I can darken, bring the highlights down, and remember, bring the blacks down, right? Let's bring this in a little smaller here because I want to get, I want to get this part here and it's not picking that part up. So I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm thinking I need to add it, but I want to subtract it. So I'm showing the mask. Yeah, so I need to add it. And I'm just going to brush it in like so. So I want these grasses here to be affected. And I want to make sure I get this whole rock here like so. That looks better. So highlights down, darken like so. Add a little edge vignette. Okay, now I can also do the same <clears throat> on the waterfall and brighten it. Okay, so this is, this is, I'm going to just call this outer edges. Oops, it helps if I spell better. Okay, so now I'm going to copy and invert it, duplicate and invert. So now I have the inside and I'm going to Brighten the whites, brighten overall, and shadows a little bit. So now I'm really bringing that waterfall up. 
right? It's clipping a little bit here and I'm okay with that actually. I'm okay with it clipping because I really want that waterfall to stand out, okay? So there's a before and after. So we're really bringing the waterfall into focus. Still feels crooked to me. There we go. Okay. And then I did a vertical of the same waterfall. Right. It was really pretty. So I cropped out that bright part. And I think this one is a more effective image. Right. And then I did it with a um, fish eye. Okay, so think outside the box, right? So mountain scenes doesn't mean you need to have the grandiose big scene. You can just do parts of the scene, right? Can you do it with a long lens? Yes. Can you do it with a wide lens? Yes. This is a super wide fish eye, right? I focused on the flowers here and let the mountains be the background, right? And I could do actually a really nice job editing this in Luminar, I bet. I might use this for flowers one day. I'll save this one for flowers. Right. So I love the foreground background here, right? And the starburst effect from the small aperture. So this is just from the aperture being uh, F, probably F16. It says F1, but that's because it's taken with that fisheye lens and it doesn't pull the metadata, right? So think outside the box. Um, when I say mountains, you know, it's this, but it's also this, right? This is a mountain sheep. <laughs> had you submitted this on a mountain sheet on the mountain theme i would have edited him you know and yes i'm really that close to him um this was at one of the stops in glacier park and he was literally just off to the side of the road um what lens here 60 mil lens so he's not that far away right and i could bring him out i'll save him for animals so i'm going to tag him with animals so I'm going to stop there. Where's my keyboard? Where is my... I've lost everything. I think it's down here. There we go. Cars next week. Um, one other thing I was going to mention, most of you are already on our, my email list. If you are not on our email list, you're missing out on my weekly photo muse newsletter. And to get on the newsletter list, all you have to do is go to our website and get something for free. So if you could please share a link to the freebies page, Rob, go over to our website and get yourself something for free. It's just that easy. So sign up for our newsletter. I send one every Friday. Um, notices about the upcoming lives, past lives. I shared a video um, recently this week, um, the other day, Friday, I think, on layers with Photoshop. So uh, you were asking about using Photoshop. Um, I did one on, on layers and making a composite. And next week we're doing cars. Thanks for that testimonial done out. And on that note, please give this video a thumbs up. And the other thing that you guys can do to help us, uh, help us grow our YouTube channel, help us grow our business in general so we can feed the cats so they don't get angry with us, is to share this video on your social media. Tell other people about it. Uh, tell them what you liked about it. Did I edit your image? Show them where I edited your image and tell them to go watch. So share this on your, on your Facebook, share it by email, WhatsApp, whatever method you use, X, Instagram, whatever. Share, share, share. We would love you to pieces if you shared all of our videos. <laughs> Thanks so much, David. We love you guys. Newsletter is money. It was money. Interesting. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. Oh, four. It was a four. <laughs> awesome. Have a great week as well, Mike. So again, happy St. Patty's Day. Go and have some, uh, eat something green or drink something green and uh, stay well. We'll see you next week for cars. Same place, same time. Take care.